It's Friday on the beat, and that means it's time to fall back. We have a very special fallback combo tonight. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer and Grammy winner, the one and only George Clinton. He led the band's Parliament and Funkadelic. Rolling Stone named his work to one of the best albums lists of all time. Clinton's also collaborated across genres, Red Hot Chili Peppers to Tupac, and you've been sampled in literally hundreds of modern songs. Another Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Carol King, a four-time Grammy winner, a Kennedy Center honoree, over 25 million albums sold. Amazing, amazing career. And we have another award winner at the what table. Are you doing here? NBC's <laughs> Harry Smith is an Emmy award-winning reporter. He's interviewed Barack Obama and Margaret Thatcher and reported from all over the world and is my colleague. Uh, thanks to all of you, George. Good who needs to, to fall back? Oh, I'm, I want to fall back on whoever's supposed to pay teachers. Mm -hmm. I think teachers work Amen. harder than you do no matter what you do. And for some reason, they're not treated like lawyers or doctors. I think they should be that important. Has always been my fallback. I think it's um, just as good as the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. You know, teachers making sure that we are taught to make decisions, to understand what we're getting ourselves into. They used to have that poster that said maybe the Pentagon should hold more bake sales and teachers should get enough money from the government. Yeah. Now, Carol, you're also a legend. You're also a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, although on the street we would, we would recognize George Clinton first as clearly the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. And she was one of the first that I knew of when I started writing songs Aww. with the Shirelle in Passaic, New Jersey, when they used to rehearse. My mama told me, mama, mama. Uh, uh, will you love me tomorrow? Yeah, will yes. you love me tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. 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 I like that's, this. That's, this could be a collabo first, right here. We used to go to Apollo and sit there all day and watch her song. Oh. And then when Tapestry came out, it stayed on the charts forever. George, then, can I take you on the road? <laughs> oh, no, I, I can't. I'm my publicist. Well, oh, Tapestry is easy. I guess we're going to talk a little music before we get to your fallback. Tapestry is one of those albums that people never stop ever. buying and never stop listening to. Forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. <laughs> so then I saw in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Chili Peppers, who was one of my artists. Well, I groove, I groove to George, so, you know, if I want a vacuum or something like that, I put on a little we bit of... We got the funk, right? <laughs> exactly. Got, that's, that's, that's so simple. Carol, who yes. needs to fall back? Ryan Zinke, Secretary of the Interior, mm. needs to fall back. And I want to say that, like, with all these bells and whistles going on, coming out of the administration, no one's paying that much attention to the environment. But Ryan Zinke has this thought that he's putting in for permission. Normally, departments have to give all their records to the National Archives. And Ryan Zinke wants to have permission to destroy records. So he definitely needs to fall back. But I'm, I'm bringing this up mm. because people can comment. The public nationally can comment until November 26th. Because you can, you should. Harry, who needs to fall back in your view? TV. Hmm. Good one. But uh, this is, uh, honestly, no, no, every, every, every time you go someplace and people say, have you seen this thing? Have you seen have you, you know, the streaming of this and the streaming of that and HBO and Hulu and Netflix and whatever? And it's like too much. It's just, it's like too much. So I did an interview with Julie Roberts a week or two ago, which is this amazing show called Homecoming. It's really, really, really terrific. But I'm not sure I would have gotten to it had I not been out to interview her, right? Mm. And so, but everybody talks, and, and I, I just like, it's too much. I watch you guys like streaming. I was gonna all say. All day long. Streaming. I mean, I stream on my phone or home on TV. I'm looking at you guys all the time. Well, a lot of people don't know when you said put a, put a glide in your stride and come on to the mothership, <laughs> you were talking about MSNBC, the mothership. <laughs> Matter of fact, here you go. What is this? <laughs> I knew you was going to have a glad in your strap. Funk power. P-Funk power. P-Funk power and the pin. These are beautiful. Yes, make, to make sure you let me, so What do we got? Oh, what's the dog? Parliament that's Funkadelic? Med, that's Medicaid fraud dog. Medicaid <laughs> fraud, fraud dog. dog. He's the, that was going to be my second fallback. But <laughs> Go it's ahead. About Tell, hold it's on. About Tell pharmaceutical, me about the Medicaid pharmaceutical fraud dog. Pharmaceutical companies, the government, and insurance companies are in cahoots together. Educate, your, educate mm -hmm. yourself on the connection between meds, you know, Obamacare, insurance companies, 
and uh, lobbyists, they run the they run this country. It's one nation under sedation. Mm. And the only thing people know about drugs is street drugs. But they just they just um, put out another opiate yesterday. That's stronger than the other one, than the other one. And they're the dope dealers of today. But they're doing it in a legal way that most of us are sedated some kind of way, legally, illegally, and nobody pays any attention to it. So the dope dog, he's sniffing out the other money that's, <laughs> that's, you know, that they make on the drugs. I think you could get more people paying attention to the Medicaid issue. We talk about health care was on the big issue. That's the biggest issue. At, when people went out to vote after all this other drama. I have another question for you, for real, which is how do you stay funky? You are like an ageless cool. <laughs> Watch your kids. The music, they get on your nerve. That's the new funk. <laughs> That's always the new music, the mu music that you hate. You give yourself a minute and learn to like it, you're in the game again. And how did you said in the game, how did you feel when you, you were doing these collaborations and you were being sampled so much? Your work had a second life and a third life with all these other artists. Well, that was the only way I could stay around to make sure that I'm around to be able to collect sooner or later. <laughs> we never got paid for that money. Did you, right? Would you say you made more off the samples than the original tours? I haven't made anything off the of samples. but I'm This is what you were talking to Rev Sharpie yeah, about. Right. I'm alive now, so I have a chance to reinvent myself to figure a way to get paid. But up until now, so can I ask a question? Because I always wondered about that, right? Because you see the sampling. Everybody's always kind of sampled. And listen, creativity is all about, uh, there's no original idea. You steal, you steal. Picasso it's said, not if you're going to steal, steal from the best. It's not stealing. Right. They actually do it. The artists, God. actually, I'm friends with them. Yeah. They take the money from the artists, but they still never give it to them. So that's my question. The, if the, I hear the, the original right from right. you, yeah. do, I, do you ever get a dime of that? For the most part, myself, no. Lots of people do. Uh, but you have to figure a way because you don't have enough money to fight the big companies. Right, right. Any fan of yours would say that's so messed up. Yeah. The last question for each of you is, uh, you were in a period of a real civil rights, women's movement, cultural musical awakening. And then it felt like there was the 80s, there was greed, there was a lot of artists who sort of wanted to stay out of politics. Are we seeing a reemergence when you look at Taylor Swift and Beyonce and all these artists now talking about voting? Do you think it's coming back to the way you guys started out? I do. I think it's coming back, and I'm glad to see it come back, because they actually took us backwards after the fights in the 60s. It went back to the two cars in the swimming pool. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And everybody forgot about voting. It was like, why do it? Well, there's no they can see why I do it now. You, all you got to do is look at the government now. You can see why you should have done it. Never been a time like this. Never. Never. I mean, it was bad. We thought it was bad in the Vietnam War, and we women mm -hmm. were fighting for our rights, and the African Americans were fighting. You know, everybody was fighting for their rights, but now everybody is, you know, except. You think it's worse than Vietnam? I mean, a lot of kids are being drafted off to get killed during Vietnam. I do think it's worse than Vietnam because I think there's a malevolence to it that I have never seen before. And what do you tell people who are, who are worried that America is never going to be the same or we're going in the wrong direction? Oh, it's going to change. It's, it always changes. The pendulum swing back and forth exactly all the time. It's mm -hmm. a cycle. Yeah, it's just going to change. But for right now, it's really bad. But all these people are get, uh, getting hurt while it's waiting well, to yeah, change. That's, that's, that's the main thing. Killing me. Suffer. People will suffer. And if, it's going to suffer more if you don't think you have anything to do with it or that you can't change it. Because if you don't, somebody's got to be a winner. And if the bad guy's going to be the winner because you didn't participate, that's part of your fault, mm -hmm. you know, because you can participate. Well, on that no note, uh, George Clinton, Carol King, Harry Smith, for a very funky fallback <laughs> Friday, my special thanks to each Sorry, of you. Sorry, I wish I could have been more funky. <laughs> you were funky. <laughs> funky enough? You funky that enough. was dope. <laughs> Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.